Hi guys! In today's video I wanted to show you how to spin dog fur into yarn and crochet a hat out of it. So I brushed my dog, he's a Samoyed, he's really cute and I, I get a lot of fur out of him especially in the summer and he likes to be brushed so it's good to use the fur for something and it's fun to brush them because they get a kick out of it and uh, dogs really enjoy the attention. And instead of just having to throw away the fur, you can use it as yarn. So let's get started. So, as you've seen, I uh, took all that fur just from about one day, and I got this much out of him just like brushing him a little bit. But I also have what I've saved up from like last year over a while. This is a lot. This. So I got a lot of Kenji fur from my Samoyed. Let's go through the first step of turning all of this into a really nice ball or two of yarn. This could make like two skeins of yarn, I think, so I'm pretty excited. All right, let's put all that back. Okay, so the equipment you'll need is actually pretty easy. I mean, you don't need a super expensive spinning wheel. I just got this drop spindle that was like five dollars on Etsy. If you don't want to have that, you can get a dowel and some CDs. I used a drumstick and a couple CDs and kind of taped it together, but I had to kind of tie a leader around the, um, the tip of it, but this has a hook so that's much easier to use. So I recommend just getting one of these Etsy drop spindles to start with. And of course you're going to need some brushes. I'm just using these dog brushes to card the fiber to just straighten them out and get them ready for spinning. Take a little bit of fur, one of these little bundles, and you're going to take your two dog brushes and I'm just going to load it onto this one, just kind of gently brush it. So you start loading it on, just like that so it gets onto the brush. I'm kind of filling it a lot, but these are small brushes and I'm like trying to get as much out of it as possible. I think we'll just leave it with that for now. And then we start to transfer it onto this brush. And I'm just taking it in between those, just going in between just to make sure all of those fibers are nice and straight. That's doing pretty well for now. So I'm just going to gently, with the ends of the bristles, just kind of gently pull like this and kind of loosen them up. Okay, so you see this is, if you can see, this is the direction I was brushing it. So now you want to roll it that same direction that it was brushed on. You don't want to roll it this way you want to roll it the same way it was brushed because that'll make it better to um, roll into, um, you know, spin into yarn. So I'm just kind of like twisting it and kind of making sure it's a roll lag that sticks. So onto the spinning section, this is where I've got my drop spindle. I'm going to take a little bit of this and kind of hold it and twist it a bit because all it is is twisting, so I'm just starting a little bit of twist right here, just so that it'll hold on to the hook and not fall off or break off. So I've got my drop spindle, and see this hook at the end? I'm just um, taking this and kind of hooking it through, kind of like that. So I'm taking that through the hook, and I'm choosing this direction to spin it, so I'm just going to start to spin it this way. And I've got a lot of twist. I'm way over twisting it, which is good to start with. And I'm just going to hold this end where it was twisted, and I'm just going to pull out, draft out a little bit, just kind of pull it, and then let go. And so this is basically what you do, and you just gotta keep spinning it. I'm, as you can see, this is spun pretty tightly. And then I just take it, 
I'm holding it right here and I'm holding it where I left that spin so now I'm just um, pulling it pull it and let go then I just let go so now I'm just gonna put this down closer to me and kind of keep it anchored here so I can keep spinning let go making sure it's nice and thin oh it's okay if you um, pull this off because you can just take a little bit of the fiber from the last one and kind of mush it together and just keep that joined just kind of push it a little bit and then just let go it's like a leap of faith you just let go and it works out in the end I'm gonna put this further down just park it between my knees a little bit and I just let go see how that works so I get just keep twisting and twisting and develop a lot of um, built-in twists so that it will travel up easily so I'm just really over twisting it so that I can let it travel up and up so I'm just gonna keep going with that for a little bit so I think this is long enough to start um, winding it back so if you can see this little notch here this is where you put it back onto the notch so that it stays put while you wind it around the little bottom half there we go and then you just start depositing it off on that little bar little handle and you want to leave a little bit of space to bring it back up around about here is where I'm gonna leave a little bit of space for this to come back up and go around the hook so that we can continue with the rest of it. And let it go. Now I'm gonna wrap it around another time just to keep it more secure. I'm just making sure I keep it on the hook so it doesn't come off and untwist. What I'm going to do to not overload this hook with going back around is I'm going to carefully take it out of the hook, just get that last bit out, and then I'm just going to wrap it around again. And then I can just keep doing this over and over and over again until I get a really thick roll of yarn. All right, so I've done a lot of spinning for this yarn. So this is what I got so far. I um, put it on these random objects. I just wrapped them around anything that was laying around that wasn't a smooth surface, just so I could unload it off the um, spinner. But um, I'm gonna make a PVC nitty knotty soon. So since I'm almost done with all this fur, I'm gonna show you a little bit probably some easier and more efficient things that I've picked up since spinning most of this stuff. I don't know if you can see, but I got all these rolags or um, bits of roving that I brushed ahead of time and I just lay it on this little blanket and keep it right here. And then I just sit here and spin them all and connect them all until I'm done. All right, so I'm gonna take one of these, just twisting this around. Uh, putting it on the hook and kind of wrapping it around that hook and What I found is that I can park it 
between my knee when I'm sitting cross-legged. I like sitting cross-legged while doing this because uh, my legs can really help keep things in place and keep them rolled up. So I'm just gonna stretch this out a little bit. And this is an easy way to spin it. I like doing it this way, just rolling it off one leg. So you start to accumulate twists by doing this. And then it's easy to remember which direction you're spinning it in. And at this point, I just like wrap it around like this because sometimes it's easier, especially once it gets thicker on the spindle, it's just easier to go like this. All right, so I finished spinning as much as I could spin of the rest of the fur, and I filled up most of that spindle. I've still got a little bit of fur left, but I think I'm gonna leave that for felting, so I'm gonna try like wet felting, needle felting projects. So I'm just gonna leave some of that fur. But I think there is a lot of yarn I can use to at least make a whole hat. So uh, now I'm gonna wind this around a knitty knotty. So I'll show you what that looks like. So this is a DIY knitty knotty that I made from PVC pipe, with just a few connectors. And this is what I'm going to wrap the yarn around to keep it tight and let the twist set. Because if you don't wrap it around something for a while and set the twist, it's just going to unspin as soon as you let it off the hook. So this is a good way to set it. So I'm going to take what I just made and I'm going to wrap it around. And in the past, I have kept this on the spindle for like at least a week. I just left it there and it did a good job on its own of setting the twist. It was like perfect, ready to use yarn. It didn't unspin at all. So you can wrap it around pretty much anything and leave it for a while if you have the time, but I'm gonna try putting it on this knitty knotty and then I can dunk it in a tub with warm water and set the twist even faster. All right, so I'm gonna start wrapping it around here. I'm gonna Put it over. All right, just wrapping around itself to keep it from untwisting. You want to wrap it nice and tight. And you can also do this around the back of a chair. See, this is a good thing to wrap it around. The back of this chair is really nice and firm, and once you wrap it around, you can kind of push it up to where the bars kind of go outwards and widen, and that's how you can keep it really tight while it sets the twist. So I've used this in the past and this has worked really well, but today I'm using this PVC Knitty Knotty. And it doesn't really widen, so I'm just going to try and keep it real tight to begin with. Wrap around this. Yeah, something like that. Wrap around a few of them, just to keep it nice and secure. All right. And so this is all wrapped around and I can leave it on here or I can dunk it in the bathtub in warm water and then um, set it on an ironing board with a hanger to set the twist. Now this is the first one that I spun, this paint chip thing. So it's been sitting there for a few days at least. I'm going to check on it and see how that twists, see if it unfurls. It does still uh, twist in on itself. If you can see that, it kind of twists in on itself. And that's why it's good to um, dunk it in a bit of warm water and let it set so it doesn't fold in. But you can also just leave this for longer until it really sets. But you notice it's not like totally unfolding and getting fatter. Let's try more of it. Ooh, see, it's not quite set. That's unsettling. So I'm just gonna keep this wrapped around a little bit more. In fact, I think I'll wrap all of these on the Knitty Knotty. Okay, 
Okay, that's all of it. <laughs> this is getting creaky. Let's see if I can let's see if I can tighten it without breaking this. So I think that's pretty tight, and that's all the yarn I have spun so far. So I think I am going to dunk it in some water and um, let it dry to set the twist. All right, so I've got my tub full of warm water. Well, hot, but not too hot. I tied each of these parts together just so that they won't felt together. So they'll keep separate while they soak up and bulge up. We'll just stick this in here. <laughs> it floats. Maybe if I take these off. Yeah, that helps. Alright. Now that these pipes are filling up, it's submerging better. Okay. So I've got it submerged in warm water and it's going to stay there for, since it's really thick, I'll probably keep it there for at least 20 to 30 minutes until it's completely soaked up all the way through. So it's been at least 30 minutes. Now I'm taking it out. Really hope this doesn't felt so much. Let it soak. So now that it's soaked, I'm going to take it gently off. Unfortunately, it does smell like wet dog, but hopefully in the next few washes, it won't smell like that once it's wet, or at least it only smells while it's wet and it's just fine when it's dry. Alrighty, now, see that's not um, twisting up anymore, it's staying put. See this? I'm gonna take this, kind of really gently wring it out of any excess moisture, getting some drips out of there. It's not that drippy, I've let it uh, sit on a towel in the bathroom sink after I took it out, so. Now I'm gonna take each of these and I'm just gonna press them under a towel like I've seen done on some other tutorials. I got them set up like this, just kind of like that, and then I'll fold it in and then fold these over and then just kind of sit on them to soak out any excess moisture. In fact, I'll use another one. So I think that's probably good, just for a minute or so, okie dokie. This is still curling in a little bit, so I think what I'll do is I'll just take them immediately to the ironing board and weigh them down with a hanger. Alright, so it's been two days and this is still draped over. It's still a little bit damp, although it's mostly dried on top. This stuff underneath is still damp and it's also not tight enough. These hangers aren't really doing a good job of keeping them tight. So moving forward, I'm probably not going to even bother doing this ironing board hanger thing. Right now I'm just going to wrap them around the nitty knotty again. I just wanted to show you what one of these looks like. So 
it's not spinning on itself anymore. There are certain parts that I may have overspun so they keep twisting on themselves, but for the most part, this is actually pretty good. This is pretty much ready to crochet with because it's not twisting on itself, it's not unfurling or anything like that. So I've been, I've done two already so far and this has bent it a lot, but I think that's for the best because then I can wind it normally around here and then scoot it up to make it really tight. And that's what I've been doing. I scooted this up a lot. It's been creaking a lot, so hopefully it stays together. But I'll just show you a bit. I'm gonna be careful not to tangle this up. All right, so that's about done. I'll leave this overnight. It's mostly dried. I can also just put this in front of a heater if I want it to be dried faster. And then tomorrow, this is gonna be a hat. So I've got this, I've um, spun it, I've woven around here, I've soaked it, I've dried it as much as I could. I mean, it's still the slightest bit a little damp, but it's mostly dry, so I'm just gonna go ahead and start crocheting with this. So I'm just gonna hold this here as if it's a ball of yarn. And just start with my slip knot. Put the hook in. And I'm probably just gonna go first height-wise then lengthwise and then um, sew it together. And hopefully I'll have enough yarn to be able to uh, sew the seams together at the end. Alright, here is the finished product. Turned out pretty well, I think. It's really warm and comfortable. It's really pretty. I did the half double crochet in the back loop pretty much just all around. So you can see how it looks. Oh, and you can um, fold this up into a brim. See, like that? So, yeah. I really like how this turned out. It keeps my ears warm, keeps my head warm. It's not too heavy, but it is pretty thick. So this will definitely keep me warm in the winter and just keep me cozy and it looks nice too, so. And Kenji likes it too. He's really interested in the smell in particular, but he, he doesn't like hats in general, so. But I like this hat. So I hope you enjoyed this and it inspired you to do something with your dog's fur if you have to brush it every day and have way too much of it. Alright, see you guys!